Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and this presentation is about performing group data analysis in EG Lab. I'll show you how to go from raw data to group level analysis. I call it the quick and not so dirty way because I think it's an elegant solution. However, nothing can replace looking at your data and assessing how efficient the automated processing methods are. So assuming you have a collection of raw data files, how can you process all these files at once in EGLab? I'll show you how to do group processing from raw data files or from what we call a bits data set. So let's start with a collection of raw data sets. And so we are going to browse for data sets. We're going to import MFF files here, which is a type of file. You can import other types of files. The advantage of this one, you can import many files at the same time. Otherwise, you have to import them one by one. Here, EGLab asks if you want to uh, resave all these data files as the EGLab file. So you answer yes, of course. And now all the files are imported. And then the next step is to uh, create a study from these data sets. And the only thing you have to do is create study using all loaded data sets. For this specific data, even the subject name is filled up. Otherwise, you have to fill it up uh, by hand. And here, you have created a study. So now, uh, now we have to import, uh, if we have imported raw data and created a study. And before you, I show you how to process this data, let's see another way to import uh, raw data. If the data is formatted in the bits format, then we can import this formatted data. The brain imaging data structure or bits is a way to name your folders and your file for an experiment, as well as adding a collection of formatted text file so it follows the bits specification. Wherever you import the raw data or bits formatted data to process the data in EGLab, in both cases we need to create a study. The advantage of using bits is that each lab can automatically import the bits folder structure as an EG lab study, including additional events and channel information that might not be available in the raw EG data files. So I'll explain that uh, in a second. So here we have a bits folder. So I'm going to show you a couple of files. Participant.tsv contains the participants here, one row per subject. We have two columns, gender and age. We also have a participant of JSON that contains the description of the column. So for example, gender and age here, what levels, what kind of value these contain. Then we're going to look uh, at a subject. So for example, subject one, folder EEG. And this folder has all subjects have free run. So this is run one, run two, and run three. And for each run, we have a collection of data files. For example, channel.tsv contains the channel information. Here, the type of channels. And then you also have electrode.tsv that contains the position of uh, the channel on the scalp. And so here we see the position. And then we have event.tsv uh, contains the event one row per event. And uh, there is many of them here. Two columns are important here, value or trial type. And this we can ex import as the type of uh, EGLab event. And so before I process this data, this free runs, which means free blocks of data, we only need one really to process in EGLab and also it will be faster. So here I'm going to remove run one and run two and only process run three. You can also import all the runs. That's not a problem. It's just going to be slower uh, to calculate in this case. And this study is available in the description below, by the way. So now we have uh, only one run. So you see subject one, subject two, only one run. And we're ready to import the data uh, in EGLab. So first, we're going to type EGLab to start the EGLab graphic interface. And once that's done, this assumes you have installed the bits import plugin. So if you don't, go to the plugin manager and install that plugin. This creates this menu. And then now I can import a bits uh, folder. And uh, and so here uh, we are we're able to use the bits data files I showed you at the beginning. So when these checkboxes are are selected, EG Lab will import the raw data files, but it will overwrite the event and channel information with the information stored in the stored in the bits files. If the data set you downloaded is well formatted in bits, it will rename events and channel locations, channel types, etc. You may also select the bits field. I'll show you in a second. 
uh, that you want to uh, uh, define for each app data types. The two choices are bids event values and bids event trial type, which I showed you in the Excel file. So you need to look at the bids event files. So if you've done previously to see which one makes the most sense uh, uh, for you. So let's do that. So we select to import the event channel, uh, uh, channel location. And then the field value is good for us. So we just press OK. And now it's importing all these files. It saved them in, in, uh, in, a, in a different folder, the derivative folder. So it doesn't overwrite any of your data files. And the first thing we'll do is to select data. So you see edit, select data. And then I select the type of channel I want to uh, remove here. So all the non eg channel I'm going to remove uh, just to make it simpler. Ask me again if I want to process all the data sets and overwrite the data. And I press yes, so it's overriding the data uh, that it has imported. And now I'm, I've selected the good channels. Now I'm going to re-reference the data to average reference. And I'll explain a little bit later why I do that. So now it's reference to average reference. And now I'm ready to uh, remove artifact in the data. And for this, uh, we recommend to use uh, the ASR plugin. So that's the plugin that's uh, here. And here I'm going to change the settings a little bit. I'll add a filter. This option is checked off by default because you can also filter your data using the filter menu in EGLab. And often this is what people do. I will use a filter centered on one hertz because this is recommended when using ICA and looking uh, for components as brain sources. I invite you to look at the IC lecture series for more detail, link in the description. I will also change the settings for rejecting channels. When I was looking at this data before this presentation, this function rejected too many channels for my taste. So I will lower the minimum correlation threshold to 0 0.7. Again, if you want more details about using ASR, I invite you to look at the GitHub documentation of that plugin. Uh, there's a link uh, below. And so let's do that. So filter, I'm going to change so it's centered on 1 hertz. And then I'll change the correlation uh, factor. So it's uh, 0 0.7 instead of 0 0.8. Uh, and it rejects less channels. And then I press OK. And now it's going gonna, it's gonna to do all this rejection. This takes about 10 minutes. And, but here for us, it's just gonna, only going to take one second. And now we're done that. And now I'm going to, uh, I mentioned I like to use average reference. The advantage with average reference is that you can do it as many times as you want. So I'll do it again here. After you remove channels, after you filter the data, etc. So it's just a simple mathematical property of the average reference that every time you apply it, it will undo the previous one automatically. So you can do it after every step if you want. The reason I like to do average reference is that it's easier to visualize the data as it removes structurations, which are common to all channels. Also, you need to compute average reference for source localization anyway, which from my perspective is one of the end goal of EEG processing. Also, there are anecdotal report that this improves the quality of ICA decomposition. So we had some artifactual channels which were included in the average reference, and we've removed them. Now we want to recompute average reference without these channels. However, to get a good head coverage, we're interpolating bad channels, then removing them after re-referencing. You might also want to try uh, the REST EGLAB plugin that calculates reference at infinity. So here I select um, uh, channels. And then the next step is to uh, run ICA. So here I select an algorithm, which is called PCAR. It's the same as the InfoMac run, run IC algorithm, which is the default, but it implements the Newton, Newton method for, to optimize the solution, so it's faster. Also, just, uh, uh, we're just passing one data set per subject here. However, if you decided to import all three runs for this data set, then make sure you check the checkbox for concatenating runs before running uh, ICA. This will ensure that all data sets of a given subject have the same decomposition. Of course, if you have different session for a subject, which means that the data that re was recorded on different days, you might not want to concatenate these data sets. This is because EGCAP will not be placed exactly the same way, so there is a risk that IC will dedicate uh, components uh, for a given uh, session. 
select the car, we don't select or we select the option to concatenate data sets, make no difference in that case. And here IC is calculated, so it's done. And then the next step is to label components uh, using IC label to figure out what kind of component this is. And once we figure out what kind of component this is, we want to label uh, the artifactual components. So here, the thresholds are set to uh, 0 0.9, which means that I want to label for ejection components which have a probability of 90% of being either eyeblings or eye movements and components which have a probability of 90% of being muscle. If you want more information about automatic component labeling, there is a video about it, a uh, link in the description. Also, there are other methods for labeling components. This is just uh, uh, one of them. So let's select 0 0.9 and press OK. And now it's labeling all the components. We're going to look uh, quickly at what kind of components it labeled. So we go to data sets. So I'm going to set the data set, for example, data set number 10. And now I'm going to plot the scalp topography with the component that were labeled for rejection. So that's uh, this menu. And here I'm going to just plot a subset of components, so about half of them. And so here is our scalp topography. And whenever there is a red square above, it means they're labeled for ejection. So in that case, it would be component 9 and 14, which are eye blinks and lateral eye movements, or labeled for ejection. So the automatic labeling method did a good job at selecting uh, these components. It's always good to go back to your data to see what the algorithms are doing. And I go back to the study set. And now I'm going to uh, extract the epoch. And so this is this menu. And I'm going to select different event types. So these are the two types of epoch I'm selecting. This is an auditory oddball task, which means that uh, participants hear beep, 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 boop, beep, 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 boop, and have to press a button on the oddball, which is the boop in this case. So this is why we select oddball with response and select standard without response. If participant respond on standard, it is considered an error. There are also other types of events in this task, but I'm not going to describe them. You can look at the readme file of the bits that I set for more uh, information. So let's go and select this event, standard oddball with response and standard. OK, and it's going to um, extract epoch from minus one to two seconds, in that case, for all data sets, and resave the data on disk. It's asking to remove a baseline. Since I've high pass filtered the data here, I don't feel I need to remove uh, the baseline. Now let's look at our study. So now we move to the, uh, the study design, and we're going to create a simple design here with type oddball uh, with versus standard. So just comparing two conditions, very simple design. Here. So once I've selected my design, uh, I'm going to press OK, and then I'll pre-compute some measures. Uh, because sometimes some measures take a long time to compute, so you want to pre-compute them. So I go to pre-compute measures, and here I'm going to select ERP. And I'm also selecting pre -com the components pre-labeled for ejection by checking the right checkbox. I'm only going to pre-compute ERP here because it's quick, and I just want to illustrate group analysis. But you can also compute spectrum, ERP, and ERP image. And so let's do that. We press OK. And of course, this is uh, speed up here. But it doesn't take very long anyway. The, the ERP are computed. So let's visualize our data. So that's the next menu on the list. And I'm going to select channel PZ for visualization and just plot the ERP and we're going to see the all ball on the left and the uh, standard on the right. Here it's reading data in real time so that's why it's taking uh, some time. And so here here you can see the all ball on the left and the standard. I'm going to plot them on top of each other here by checking this checkbox in the option. And so here we go. So we can clearly see the difference between the two types of, of trial and clearly the peak, the P300 peak. And now I'm going to plot the topographies. So to plot a topography, uh, as you have seen, I selected all the channels. Then I need to select a time range. And also I need to change the plotting options to plot scalp topographies. 
EG Lab will average the electrode potential in the time range of interest be before plotting the topography. So here we go, we're going to select 300 to 350 millisecond, and then the option to plot the uh, topography right here. Press OK, and then again we plot the ERP, plot ERP, and now we have the two scalp topography. And so here you see a clear P300 scalp topography. So we've been able to perform group analysis starting from raw data in a little bit less than 10 minutes. I cut the video segments where EGLAB was computing measure and most of the time consuming processing on these data sets were ASR and ICA, which took about 10 minutes each. So realistically, it would take about 30 minutes to process this bits data set and about an hour and a half if I was including all the runs from all the subjects. And uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, you have the history of all your actions performed on the interface. You can easily save that script and run it again. It would then re-import the BIS data set, perform automatically all the operations you've done manually. It's always a good idea to save a script for future reference. It's in the file tab under script history. And I want to thank you for your attention and I'll see you in one of the future videos.